Hello, I'm Joseph Fleischman, Executive Chef, Food Production Manager, Emeritus Medical Center in Hagerstown, Maryland. With the holiday season fast approaching, people often ask me, Chef, what can I do to take to a holiday party that everybody else doesn't do, doesn't take a lot of time, or doesn't cost a whole lot of money? Um, we are going to do an adaptation of an old Argentinian or South American favorite of ceviche. Traditionally, ceviche is made with localized seafood, shrimp, scallops, crab, uh, and fishes. Traditionally done in small chunks, marinated in citrus juice until the flesh of the fish or seafood actually cooks, then it's mixed with tomatoes and different spices. We're gonna do basically the same thing, but instead of fresh raw fish, we're gonna sort of localize it a little bit, make it a Western Maryland, Washington County thing, and we're gonna use chunked albacore tuna, which is already cooked. This does two things. One, it's readily available. It's very cost effective, and two, it doesn't take long to do this dish. Traditional ceviche takes hours, sometimes overnight. This will take literally a couple minutes. You can whip this up for a party after you get home from work, and everybody will love it. They'll be begging for the recipe, wondering where you got it. So let's begin. Like I said, we're going to start out. This is approximately eight ounces of white albacore chunk tuna. We're going to add it to our mixing bowl. We're going to take a, simply a fork, and we're going to begin to sort of make it a little bit smaller. You don't want to break it up too, too, too much because as we begin to add the other ingredients and we mix it up, the tuna will break up and that's fine. That's what we want, but we don't want it to get to be uh, sawdust, so to speak. Okay, our tuna is looking really good. And again, just like the, in the original, we are going to add some citrus juice. We have the juice of two or three lemons, depending on how much juice you like. I usually use three and I'm going to show you the easiest way to get the juice out of a lemon. We're gonna take your average lemon and we're going to press down on it and sort of pulp out the inside. We're gonna take our knife, we're gonna give it a quick cut and we're gonna spread it over top of our tuna. There we go. A quick lesson in lemon. We are gonna save just a little bit of this lemon. It's gonna be part of our garnish at the end when we get done. And this is something nice as well. It makes a really nice, uh, a really nice presentation so to speak, for your dish. We're gonna do the same thing with a lime. We're gonna give that a quick cut. We're gonna put a little lime juice on there. There we go. And again, we're gonna make a small cut in our lime. And we're gonna use this for our presentation purposes as well. We're gonna reserve these to the side. Okay, and we're gonna let that sit and marinate just for a couple minutes. We're gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper in it. and a little bit of garlic, about one tablespoon, actually about a half a tablespoon, I should say. We're gonna give it a quick mix. And again, we don't wanna break up our tuna too much, but it is really absorbing that citrus flavor. Wonderful aroma. Okay, our tuna looks great. Literally, this takes no time at all. And we're gonna to begin to add our other ingredients. Again, traditionally, a tomato base with our seafood. We have some chopped tomato here that we did. These are two large tomatoes. You can use, oh, I would say probably a tomato and a half. Reserve the other part of the tomato for anything else you might need it for. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix that together with our, with our tuna. Okay, that looks great. We're also going to add about two stalks of chopped green onion. One stalk of minced celery one quarter of a medium red onion. That's more minced, I would say, than chopped. We're going to add about two tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley, two tablespoons fresh chopped cilantro, a little bit more salt and pepper. And we're gonna mix that. Colors again look wonderful. Aroma is outstanding. You can really smell that citrus. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for just a second. We also have a fresh jalapeno pepper. These can be purchased at any grocery store, uh, certainly grown in your garden. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of fresh jalapeno pepper. Now, the thing you have to remember with peppers is, one, the majority of the heat on a pepper is in the seeds. As we cut it open, you can see the majority of the seeds inside. That's where we get all of our heat. We're gonna sort of reduce our heat a little bit and we're gonna take out the majority of the seeds from the inside of our jalapeno. You can make this dish as hot or as mild as you'd like it. I'd like a little bit of spice, so I'm gonna leave some of the 
some of the membrane inside. There's heat in the membrane as well. That's the white part inside the pepper. And I'm gonna to begin to remove the majority of the seeds. Um, for this dish, we're making enough for, oh, I would say about six people. I'm not gonna use a whole jalapeno pepper, and I'm gonna take care to mince it up very finely before we add it to our dish. The thing you have to make sure when you use peppers, if you have a glove, you can certainly wear it when you cut them. Uh, if you don't have a glove, make sure you wash your hands after you use the pepper. Don't touch your eyes. Uh, don't touch any other body parts. The pepper capsicum, which is the hot part of the pepper, will make whatever you touch burn like fire. So you really don't want to do that. Okay. And again, we've used about half of our jalapeno pepper. We'll reserve the other half. Peppers freeze wonderfully, by the way. If you grow some in the summertime, you don't get them all used up, pop them right in a Ziploc bag, put them in the freezer. They will hold literally for up to a year. That's what I do at home, and it works great. Okay. This looks wonderful. The colors are outstanding. And here is the part that I told you about that we're going to do with our lemon and our lime. We're going to take a piece of the lemon we reserve. Um, we're going to put this in, this is simply an iced tea glass. You can put it in uh, martini glasses, traditionally served in those. If you want to put it in a bowl, if you want to make a bunch for a whole bunch of people. But here's how we're going to kind of make this look a little special and you can do this easily at home. You get your glass, you get your lemon, and you simply run the lemon around the top of the glass, okay? It just makes it wet. In a separate container, we have a little bit of paprika along with some parsley. And we're just going to put our glass in there the same way as if you were making a margarita, so to speak, and you're putting uh, salt on the rim or sugar on the rim. There we go. Sh shake off the excess, and there you go. You've got a lovely presentation not everybody's seen before, and it was so simple. Now we're simply going to take our albacore tuna ceviche, and we're going to fill our glass with our mixture. This can certainly be done overnight. We did it here in about eight minutes. Just goes to show you how easy this dish actually is. You can do it the day before, it's just fine. Uh, it's one of the things that the longer that it sits or the longer it rests, the better it's gonna be, but you can throw it together in little or no time. Okay, there we go. There you have it. We're gonna put it here on the side. We have some pop chips that we're gonna use as our garnish for dip. Uh, if you haven't had a pop chip, I strongly recommend you to give them a try. They aren't fried, they're not baked, they're basically pressurized and they uh, potato sort of pop, so to speak. Very light, very crispy. Anyway, this has been Chef Joe Fleischman, uh, Western Maryland Ceviche. Please enjoy.